Hello. I'd like to do a response to fan requests. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had a video talked about what California could do if it had to secede immediately. And we talked about a variety of steps, one of which was called a blue ribbon panel on exploring independence. A lot of people ask questions about that. Who's on that panel? Uh, what would that be, etc. So this is just about the Blue Ribbon Panel on Independence. Hi, I'm Marcus Ruiz Evans with the CalExit Movement, also known as SIM. So uh, the question is, how do you secede correctly? Well, there's no real good answer. There's not a manual. Nobody actually knows. There's different theorists and there's professors, but there's not a book. There's not a definitive study on peaceful legal secession. Um, and how to go about it. One of the things that we've noticed is that Scotland did a pretty good job. Now, no, Scotland hasn't achieved full independence, but they did have a couple of votes that allowed them to uh, break away from England. They chose not to do that. They also had votes to take powers back from the government in London or England and devolve them back to Scotland. Now, all of that got started with a blue ribbon investigation in Scotland in 2008. It was called the Kalman Condition, or the Blue Ribbon uh, or Scottish Independence Panel, Devolution Panel. Devo Max was another term for it. Basically, Scotland got together professors, reporters, experts, activists, teachers, anybody who had any sort of expertise. They looked at the topic of independence and broke it down into what they called focus groups. Uh, legal aspects, business aspects, teaching aspects, food, agriculture, etc. And then they invited experts to come and speak on just that particular section. So you were a legal expert. You didn't talk about whether you thought Scottish independence was a good idea. You were brought in to talk about specifically if it was legal and what the legal challenges may be. You didn't have to say it could happen. You could say whatever you want. But the panel broke up into focus groups brought in experts, and the experts were required to speak on just that one subject in that focus group. Then all the focus groups were put together, and they released a report months later that talked about facts regarding independence. It didn't say it would be easy. It didn't say you could do it overnight. Some of the things were very challenging. Some of them didn't have problems that seemed to have quick answers. But that report, well, look at Scotland. Since 2008, they've only been having more votes for independence and more discussion. And even when they lost the vote for full independence from the UK, that didn't stop them thinking about it. So when that Kalman report came out in 2008, people hated it. People criticized it. They said, this is a joke. Well, that report was referred to for the next couple years. And it kept that country motivated and moving forward on independence because they finally had a fact book. It was an opinion. They were able to unify the Scottish people saying, here are the facts. They didn't say do it. They didn't say it was easy, but they said, here are the facts. That forced all of Scotland to take it seriously and to drill down onto the real issues. So Scottish people were saying, this is going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem if we leave England. Well, that report said, well, actually, these two things you're complaining about, those are real problems. These other stuff is garbage. Throw it away. And so the intelligence level of the Scottish debate amongst the people there jumped because they had a fact book and it was unbiased. And people said, hey, I don't think it's gonna be easy. That made the report even believable. So I suggest we do that here in California. It's called a blue ribbon panel on uh, self-determination. Yes, California proposed this in 2015 and the Attorney General of California approved that language. So there's already legal language on how to do it. Just look up a uh, new hope or a panel, blue ribbon panel on devolution I think we were called Sovereign California at that time, or Yes California, 2015, already provided the lingual language, already approved by the California government. So we already have the lingual language to do this and literally recreate our Scottish devolution panel here in California. I would suggest that we do that because it doesn't make you agree that we need to secede, but it will make everybody talk about secession and it will make us talk about the real issues instead of fake issues. So. All of the conversation here in California jumps up in information and seriousness. And because the report doesn't say you should do this, it just talks about how to do it and the difficulties, it's believable. The debate isn't ended. Because this report happens doesn't mean California is choosing secession. It means we're being more educated about making such a big call. 
everybody in California should support that. When you look at Steve Lopez, uh, Tom Elias, Dan Walters, and the editor of another newspaper all talking about, hey, you should look into secession even if you don't like the idea because look, America's falling apart. This is what the Blue Ribbon Panel does. Now, Scotland was able to get the panel launched in a few months, and the actual investigation only took a few months. So if you get the panel up and running, it can be wrapped up in a few months, and you'll have a guidebook that says, here are the facts, looking at independence, let's focus on these real issues, let's throw out these fake issues, and let's have an intelligent discussion, and this is a serious topic. That all happens the moment that report's released. You can do it, nothing uh, is illegal about doing this. The California government does blue ribbon panel investigations all the time. So 2015, they did one on child education and on marijuana. There's videos of those discussions, there's reports, you can see exactly how they organized those two different panels, how they reached out to experts, how they broke it into focus groups, how they brought all those people together. And then you can watch the videos of them actually doing it. You can compare that to the Scottish Independence Blue Ribbon Panel and you can see the identical formation between California Blue Ribbon Panels and the Scottish Devolution Panel and they basically match up like this perfectly. It's, it's a similar concept. You can easily do that. So. Yes, it's a hot one in Fresno. Okay, so who's going to be on this panel? How do you make that happen? This is my guess. Now, what I did was I compiled everybody who's ever talked about CalExit or California independence or removing power from the federal government or California could push off the federal government. Anybody of any education or authority or expertise or intelligence who made any sort of statement or discussion about that at any time over the last two decades. Got a whole list right here, everybody, which will be provided to you and which was covered in the other video, but we're gonna zero down on just this. The reason I put this list together is that you announce a panel on independence, people are gonna say, I never said that, I don't know what you're talking about. It's gonna get political real quick. Some people are gonna get scared, not wanna bring it up. All of these people already talked about this. So they can't act like they don't know what you're talking about or they never took a stance. Also, they took a stance when nobody was looking, which means it's a more honest opinion than what they would give now when everybody's paying attention. So you call these people in to speak about a specific subject based upon something they already said. Then they can't play any games and they can't act like they don't know what you talk about. That'll get that panel up and running real quick. And it will insulate it from political agitators. So you announce this panel, all sorts of people are going to say, I need to be on it. I need to be on it. Who do you know is actually interested in providing information versus derailing the whole event? I would say don't have anybody new. Use only people who've already spoken and ask them only on subjects they already spoke on. That way, no agenda person can come in and no agendas can come in. And you just have a report that does facts and truth. That's why I list these people. That's why I say you get started this way. So right off the bat, I would say get a hold of Allison Holmes at Humboldt University. She has interviewed five governors and multiple ambassadors and has done a study uh, where she did a presentation and uh, did a review on California as a nation state. So that's Allison Holmes at Humboldt University has talked about California as a nation state, interviewed multiple governors, interviewed multiple ambassadors, highest ranking authority, academia ever looking into this subject, and all of her research is very current, it's a year old. So I would touch bases with her because she's gonna be able to hook you into high level academia and make sure that this panel has good questions. The other person I would talk to is Joe Matthews with Zocalo Public Square. So 2010, Joe Matthews on his own got together reporters, Activists, publicity people, famous people got together a whole crowd and had a discussion in 2010 on could California become a nation. Nobody was talking about this at that time. The guy got multiple experts together. He's famous, is known throughout California, and had an audience. So he could easily make this a big event that's publicized and a lot of people want to be part of. You get those two people together and use this list, you got yourself action right away. So let's go into the list. 
Now, all this information will be provided, etc. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through it so that you have a rough idea who these people are. So, business focus group. They would be looking into what would be the impact to the California economy if it uh, seceded. Shervin Pishvar is a billionaire based out of Silicon Valley, and Peter Thiel is also a billionaire, and they both do tech and international trade. Their companies are uh, do business across America, in California, with multiple other U.S. partners, and around the world. So those two people right off the bat can talk about California independence. By the way, both of those people promoted CalExit. Publicity. Daryl Sragow is a political consultant. Robert Wynn is a publicity consultant. David Gershwin is a political consultant who worked on the Hollywood secession. These three publicity experts could testify to how you can educate California on this idea and implement the panel, AKA get publicity and get people interested. Three publicists, and they all talked about or had specific opinions on CalExit and California independence. Activists. Now, these are regular Californians and who've taken a stance supporting California independence. So you could ask them, hey, random independent person, why did you as a Californian think of this idea? What did you see as a Californian? This focus group lets you see the mind of Californians and see how we've been thinking about being a nation for many years. And then it's not a force, it's not somebody making it happen, it's just in the air. They can testify. So number one is Michael Kicho, who started the term CalExit, uh, the University of California Student Association that divested from, uh, they were so disgusted with America, they divested the uh, University of California system from America. So they cut off the UC system from the American economy. That was the UC Cal Student Association. Michelle Richman wrote a book in 2014 about California sec secession. Uh, it sold a lot. November, 13,000 Californians signed a petition to secede in 2012. Let's talk to them. Scholars and rogues sort of made an analysis about California should secede in 2011. Kyle Ellis was a Californian who wanted California to secede and tried to start CalExit on his own in 2008. And finally, Jeff Morissette uh, started the Committee to Explore Secession in 2005, and he tried to start CalExit all on his own and worked part of a uh, big polis uh, political activist group. So let's. the next focus group would be lawyers. Is it legal to secede? Do we know that? So 2020, F.H. Buckley wrote the book American Secession. He teaches at a law university in America on the East Coast where he outright said California could secede. Uh, Professor Waters also wrote the book Boxing Pandora and is a constitutional law scholar. And he also said California could legally take off. Both of those professors recognized the constitutional decision in Texas versus White, which came after, uh, I think it was 1866 or 67, and said you could secede with consent of the states. So two legal professors said, yes, that does say that. Yes, that is the law. We also have Chris Mitchell, who writes for Cal Globe in 2019. He's a Sacramento political legal analyst. Erwin Chemerinsky, the UC Berkeley Dean of the Constitutional Scholar, also said a simple majority vote in Congress could allow California to secede three years ago, Erwin Chemerinsky. Danny Savalos is the legal analyst uh, at multiple TV stations. And in 2016, he said California could secede and America would do nothing about it. He was the legal analyst for MSNBC TV. And he said, 2016, yeah, they could probably just pull it off and nobody would do anything about it. Uh, the University of California at Berkeley Constitutional Center also acknowledged in 2016 that Texas versus White does say you can secede with consent of the states. That's the UC Berkeley Constitutional Center, 2016. And finally, the attorney generals, three different attorney generals, Kamala Harris, Kathleen Keenley, and Javier Becerra, three attorney generals, all said, approving yes, California initiatives, that Texas versus White exists, and it says consent to the states. They wrote that in legal uh, reports back to us. So the three different people who run the law in California said Texas versus White exists and you can secede. We need them at this panel to say, yeah, that's possible. And no, it does not say you have to have an amendment. That is a guess. 
and constitutional scholar Erwin Chemerinsky says a simple majority vote would do it too. So let's look into that. Finally, politicians. If you're going to do this, how do you make it actually happen? How do you make California government do it? So that you don't seem dumb, you want to interview politicians who actually know how the government works and say, well, how would we do this if we were going to do that? What are the pitfalls? What are the difficulties? How do you get people to vote for it? So Governor Newsom, Governor Brown, and Arnold Schwarzenegger all said California is a nation state. What were they thinking? Why did they say that? Nobody made them say that. So let's interview the three governors and ask, what did you see? Why did you even think California is a nation state? Why did you bother to say that? Also, Willie Brown in 2018 went on CBS uh, television in the Bay Area and said California could survive on its own independently. That's Willie Brown, 2018. California could survive on its own independently. Willie Brown ran California for decades. So, someone to talk to. Kamala Harris also on 8-2-2017, Kamala Harris, 8-2-2-17, said, I understand some of the sentiment behind CalExit. What did she mean? Andrew Thompson is a politician out of Tiburon. He was interested in the movement. Derek Seaver is a politician out of San Jose, and Bob Pinsler from Redondo, three politicians who reached out directly to CalExit to join. Governor Davis in 2017, February, said, we'll just keep our money as if he was fine with California cutting off the federal government. That's a sitting governor. Well, not sitting, former governor, 2017, acted like he was fine cutting off the feds. Assembly member Sebastian Thomas, 2017, said, we are open to discussion. Kevin DeLeon, also from the assembly, called Cal America a foreign nation in 2016. Evan Lowe from the assembly said he would support secession in 2016, November. On October 2015, Hillary Clinton said that California is as big as many countries. What did she mean by that? She was Secretary of State for America. She's traveled the world. That woman has more international policy experience than anybody. And she said, California basically is a nation. Let's talk to her. February 2015, Nora Campos, the third highest ranking member of the Assembly at that time, proposed an embassy as any foreign government office in D.C. for Cali. 2013 to 2014, the DMV for undocumented immigrants and sanctuary laws were pursued. We should talk to all of the politicians. There's not that many that were pursuing the laws that said uh, California government will not work with the federal government in any way on driver's license and then on immigration. The California politicians who looked into how do you cut off the feds are experts now on devolution and we need to talk to them but we should only talk to the ones who pursued the dmv law and the sanctuary cities law again so it's not politicized what did you see at that time and we have a lot of the records and notes that we can compare to them holly mitchell 2011 talked about and oversaw the report on california supporting america and in 2006 jackie spear who's a member of congress said that california should secede so Economics. You're going to secede. How do you separate from the American economy? Do you keep the U.S. dollar? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Well, let's talk to actual economists and people who are experts. James Poulos works at the Claremont University. In 2017, he talked about this. He said California can break off economically from America. Michael Boskin is a Stanford professor of economics, and he talked about centrifugal forces in California pulling away from the main economy in America. Frederick Sell is a Munich University professor. In 2013, he said California should separate from the U.S. dollar. Philip Greenspan is a Harvard professor, and he said we should separate from the dollar in 2011. Also in 2011, Stephen Hill, also a professor, said we should separate from the dollar. 2010, Brad Skills, SKI Skills, 1862, uh, California had a more stable currency than America. And he talked about that in 2010, almost suggesting we should go back to that independent currency from America. 2009, Joe Wiesenthal said that California basically has its own currency independent from America. 2009, Peter Schiff also said when the dollar falls, California will secede. And in 2006, Dirk Brockman said California economy is cut off from the USA. So these are all experts, professors in economics, 
And they already took a stance on this. So let's see what they had to say. Now, we want to talk about just raw facts. You know, uh, how, how seriously did Californians take the idea of secession? How seriously do Californians look into independence? How seriously do they think they could survive uh, not partnering with the federal government? Let's talk to reporters and witnesses and expert testimony who took a stance trying to describe this. And let's just hear from them where Californians are on this idea. So I call this category witnesses and reporters. Uh, Marga Cooley, Tom Elias, Steve Lopez, Dan Walters in 2010, 2020 all said California should look into dependence. Those are all newspaper writers or columnists who've been covering California government for decades. And they've all this year said, you need to look into independence. Why did they say that? You know, they're in a position to know uh, what California government is, the flow of California politics over decades. Why are they saying now for the first time, look into secession? 2019, uh, Joe Garofoli wrote about how California wants to secede. He's the top political reporter for one of the largest newspapers in NorCal SF. 2017, Daniel Riley admitted that 47.5% of Californians were open to secession in GQ magazine. Daniel Riley fact-checked that and can confirm 47.5% of Californians were open to secession. Why? Also, 2017, uh, California's entering into secession already. Adam Nagurney said that. Uh, he's also a reporter. Why was he saying that? He's not from California. Why was he saying California's already going to secede? Uh, the LA Times editorial board said in 2015, California should not force California government employees to be loyal to the federal government. So 2015, LA Times editorial board said, let's get rid of the requirement that California government employees have to swear loyalty to America. Why did they say that? 2013, reporter Andy Cohen talked about why he believes in secession. Richard Dunham, 2012, talked about how America hates California. 2012, Dennis Romero talked about California independence. He's also extensively covered the Cal Exit movement, probably more than any other reporter. That's Dennis Romero. 2010, John Pitney talked about how California is a different political culture. 2010, Con Carroll wrote that California is so different it should secede. In 2008, Capitol, uh, Washington, D.C. Bureau correspondent with years of experience in federal government policy, Wes Vernon, in 2008, said California should secede. Gar Alparovitz of the New York Times in 2007. Joe Donnelly in 2005. Pulitzer Prize winner Pat Morrison also said that the year before, 04. And in 1993, Sergio Munoz talked about how California should have a separate foreign policy. These are all reporters. These are all people who cover government and politics. And they all took some sort of stance saying California should be independent. Okay, now we're going to get to what I call experts. These are people who have talked about secession, said to explore secession, talked about California being independent from the federal government. And they're either Paul, they're, uh, super experts or they're professors. So the last section was interview reporters and witnesses people who've reported on California secession and just hear from them why they made those statements. What were they saying? Next group, talk to professors and experts who've talked about secession and ask them, is it possible? What are the difficulties? Why did you make uh, your comment that you did? So Marga K. Cooley and Dan Walters are editors of paper, uh, newspapers. Michael Sertic is a policy analyst in Sacramento. Mort Rosenblum is on the Council of Foreign Relations. Mark Baldassier is a editor for the Public Policy Institute of California. Marcos Kunalakis is a policy expert and married to the Lieutenant Governor of California. Paul Starobin is an international affairs expert. James Goldsboro is an international affairs expert. And they all said California should secede. Now they're not professors, but they are experts. Also, Julie McKinnon never said California should secede, but she said California acts like a newspaper, and she tried to launch a newspaper as if California news. She's also an expert in running newspapers, and she said California looks like it's a nation and wanted to build on that. So let's go to the actual professors who've talked about California independence academically. 
Richard Green from USC, Abraham Lowenthal from UC Long Beach, E. Donald Elliott from Yale University, Ilhan Stevens from Amherst, William Riggs from California State University, San Francisco, Bernard Gorman from the University of California at Irvine, Douglas Kassar from UCLA, Bernadette Meyer from UCLA, Daniel Hendel De La O from California State University, San Jose, Jonathan Taplin from USC, Allison Holmes from Humboldt, Kevin Johnson from the University of California at Davis, Karthik Ramakrishnan from UC uh, California Riverside, Orville Shell from UC Berkeley, Jeffrey Cohen from University of Southern California, H. W. Brands from Austin University, Bridget Coggins from the University of California at Santa Barbara, Cal Rostalia from UCLA, Jeremy Weinstein from Stanford University, Michael Boskin from Stanford University, David Freeman from Stanford University, Thomas Mann from the University of California at Berkeley, Joseph Chitri, Chitri and Chris Habels Gray from the University of California system. All those people talked about independence. You should get them together. You should immediately get Joe Matthews, Allison Holmes together. You should start asking all these people if they would even be willing to be on a panel. Some of them are going to say no, but it doesn't matter. Um, when you ask a bunch of them, we can get this in the news and we can put it in their head. Also, when the governor calls on them, they're going to say yes. So I say, let's get this panel moving because this is the one thing that propelled Scotland to independence. And we already know how to do this in California. And 95% of the experts are here in California. Why are we waiting? <laughs>